Today we'll be going over square up. Now, square up is a little tricky. They're basically giving you a number and they want you to return an array of that number square of length that number squared. Now, each of these arrays has a special pattern to it. If you look at this first example here, when they give you integer n equaling 3 as the input, you can see that each of these groups of 3, each of these groups of n are very similar. You'll see that this last group here is 3, 2, 1. This middle group here is 3, 2, 1, except with the first number substituted for 0. And this group here, 3, 2, 1, except the 3 and the 2 are substituted for both for zeros. Now, if you look at this last example here, when n is 4, you can see that this last group is 4, 3, 2, 1. And this first group here, in this first group, they hide the first three numbers, and they only show you one. Now, in the second group here, they hide two numbers as zeros, and they only show you two and one. By this third group here, they hide one number, and they show you three, two, one. And by this nth group, they, only, they show you all the numbers. Now, the reason I say the nth group is because that's extremely important. If you'll notice, you'll see that um, by, the, by the time you reach the nth group inside the array, there's no longer any zeros within that subgroup. So why don't we start by creating an integer array, and we'll call it array. And we'll set it equal to a new integer array of length n times n. Now, like we did analyzing the practice problems, we'll want to break up the array into little subgroups of length n. So we'll create an, a for loop going through the array. But the reason why we say i is less than n and i and not i is less than array dot length is because i is not actually going through the array. I is simply telling you which subgroup you're on. So when i is 0, it's telling you that you're checking the first subgroup. When i is 1, you're checking the second subgroup. And when i is less than n, so when i is n minus 1, you're checking the last subgroup. So now we'll create a second for loop. And this, this for loop here will be checking, will be running throughout each of those subgroups. Now this is also the reason why we say we say j is less than n because each of these groups is n length long. Now once you're here, you'll need to say array at i times n plus j is equal to n minus j. Now this is ignoring the zeros. What we, what we want to do right now is just get down the base foundation, essentially. So what you're doing by doing this is your, the i times n will tell you which group you're in, which subgroup, which subgroup you're in. So when zero, let's say n is 3. When i is 0, that's 3 times 0, so that's 0. When i is 1, That'll be, you'll be starting at index 3, which is right because it's 0, 1, 2, 3. And then when i is 2, you'll be starting at 6, which makes sense because it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then the plus j will essentially tell you whether you're here, here, or here within each subgroup. Now you set it equal to n minus j because each group is n length long, and you can see that as you go, as you loop through the for loops, j increases, and its maximum will be n minus 1. And that makes sense, because by the time you reach the last number inside a subgroup, n minus j will equal 1. Now, we need to account for the zeros. So what we're going to do is use an if statement. Now, in, inside this if statement, 
we'll say if j is less than n minus i minus 1. And if it is, then we want to continue. Now, this if statement right here works because as you go throughout each subgroup, you're essentially checking if if that subgroup, how far, you're essentially checking how far that subgroup is into the array. You're checking which subgroup it is. Because remember, by the nth subgroup, you won't have any zeros left. And this makes sense because you can see that i, the maximum i will be is n minus 1. Because our upper limit on i is less than n. Which means that we need this minus 1 here because the n, when i is at its maximum value, n minus i will still be 1. So we need the minus 1 to make it equal to 0. Now you'll notice that there's a continue statement here. All continue really does is make you skip over the rest of your current iteration of the for loop you're in and move you on to the next iteration. So let's say j is 0 and this if statement was true. All that means is that all the continue means is that we skip over this statement here and we move on to the next iteration of this for loop so that now j is equal to 1. Now if this if statement does not occur, if this is if statement is false and we do not continue, then we will activate this statement here. Now once we finish this, all you need to do is return gray. And that is the right answer.